What is extinction? What is extirpation? What are background versus mass extinction? What causes what causes extinction? Are we causing mass extinction? And besides, why should we care? Extinction is the irreversible disappearance of a species from the earth. That means zero individuals are left. None in zoos or labs or anywhere else on the planet. Now usually when I ask uh, students what extinction is, they'll say that few individuals are left. It's not a few are left. It is none, zero, kaput. What is extirpation? Extirpation is very different. It's the disappearance of a species from part of its range. So one example is that bison have been extirpated from most of their previous range, but they're not extinct. They're still there, and um, there are quite a few thousand of them uh, now, but they have been extirpated from much of their range. What is background extinction? And what are mass extinctions? And what's the difference? 90% of all species that have ever lived have gone extinct. So what's the big deal, right? Well, in the history of life on Earth, mass extinctions, A, are only caused by collisions between massive asteroids and the Earth. B, have never occurred. C, are the only way that species vanish from this planet. Or D, have happened five times in the past and one may be occurring right now. Which of those do you think um, are true? They've happened five times in the past and one may be occurring right now. The background extinction rate is the relatively constant rate at which organisms have been disappearing from the fossil record and that's true at all times. But a mass extinction is an exceptional decline in species it's global in extent. It affects a broad range of taxonomic groups over a relatively short period of time. So a big event like a volcanic uh, eruption, an asteroid, it's an exceptional decline, global in extent, many different types of organisms in a short period of time. Here are five max extinctions that exceed the background rate. And as you can see here, uh, the extinction rate is going up and down and up and down. These five exceed the background rate, which overall the background rate has been declining over a great many millions of years. But these five events uh, exceed the others. This is presented in kind of the negative, what's, how many species have we lost? Now the next slide is how many species do we, ma uh, do we have remaining? So we can see there are um, here are five big ones and then the Jurassic, which was a smaller mass extinction, but um, these major events. But in the meantime, we have been building up. The number of species has been increasing over time as the Earth has existed for some four billion years. Uh, and species have been increasing, but we've had these setbacks. I like this slide also because it shows how many species remain, so it's kind of the positive side of the coin. So what causes extinction? Well, there are several different types of cause, causes. Um, the failure of a species to adapt to major changes in the environment causes extinction. Uh, natural cha changes have caused the extinctions. Volcanoes, meteors, climate change, there have been big climate changes in the past, sea level changes. And some species are just inherently more at risk than others. Those that are rare, of course, are more at risk than those that are common. <clears throat> those who have a small uh, geographic range would be more at risk. If you're long-lived, you're more likely to be at risk than if you're a very short-lived species that has lots of uh, progeny. Specialists are more likely to go extinct than our generalists. That's understandable, right? And keystone species, when they go extinct, they are likely to take many other species with them. So rarity, rare species or those with a small geographic range. In the case of the California condor, 
um, it's left with a very small geographic range. And that's true of a lot of species as we've um, eliminated their habitat, their range is contracted, and then uh, it's a fairly rare species to start with. So long-lived versus short-lived species, uh, those that are long-lived have low reproductive rates, those that have, are short-lived have high reproductive rates, the long-lived low reproductive rates are the ones that are more likely to go extinct. Specialists like a panda that only uh, eats bamboo is more likely uh, to go extinct than a coyote that, ha that can occupy a, a great range of habitats. And sometimes they have non-adaptive behavior. For example, a red-headed woodpecker uh, was fond of flying directly in front of cars. Uh, lost a lot of them that way. Keystone species like the uh, sea otter are particularly important. Keystone species have a disproportionate effect to their numerical abundance. Their removal leads to big changes in ecosystem structure and often the loss of other species besides themselves. There's different types of keystone species. They may be habitat modifiers like elephants. Um, so when they, uh, if they were wiped out in an area, you would expect several other um, species to go with them because uh, they've modified the habitat so it could uh, um, support other species. Keystone predators like wolves and otters, keystone herbivores like the prairie dog and the beaver, or pollinators uh, like bats, bees, and birds. These all have uh, a lot of links to other species and those links uh, will be broken if one of them goes down. So a keystone species like the sea otter exerts this big influence on the community's composition and structure. And the, the sea otter used to eat sea urchins. When the sea otter was almost wiped out, you had the keystone, and a keystone in an arch is that essential stone in the center there. When you take the keystone out, the whole uh, arch collapses. When you take the keystone species out, it was eating all these urchins, keeping them uh, in check. And with the sea otter absent, you had urchins take off and eat all the seaweed, the kelp, the seaweed, and um, this kelp forest was decimated. And lots of other species depended on the kelp forest as a place to live. So the explosion in the sea urchin population overgrazed the kelp and changed the ecosystem dramatically. So a keystone species is particularly important. So those are some of the causes of extinction. Now, are we causing a new mass extinction? Well, how many species are on the planet, first of all? There may be some 30 to 150 million species on the planet, most of them insects, but we haven't uh, even cataloged them yet. Less than 2 million species have been cataloged. And one half to three quarters of the species live in tropical climates, which are also rapidly degrading areas. And Costa Rica, which is less than half the size of the state of New York, um, has 5% of all known species. You can see how rich these tropical air areas are. Population trends worldwide. Well, if uh, the population index was 100 in 1970, and you can compare now to what uh, populations were in 1970, terrestrial species are down to less than 70, um, less than 70 compared to 100. So they have lost more than 30 percent of um, terrestrial species, and we've lost over 50 percent of freshwater species. So it's a dramatic decline from 1970. Thirty percent of terrestrial species and um, fifty percent of freshwater species. If that's not something to worry about, I, I don't know what is. 